Mr. President, last week we received remarkable news about a milestone in Americans' health care. A record 20 million Americans are now covered by health insurance under the Affordable Care Act. This is a sign of progress as we improve the quality of life and health care protections under President Biden. Having quality, affordable health care coverage means having peace of mind if you get a diagnosis or an accident or if you need to access care and you're facing medical debt. I know this story. I've been there. I was a law student at Georgetown when my wife and I were blessed with the birth of our first child, a baby girl born with a serious medical condition. As a young father without insurance, I can tell you, there is no greater feeling of helplessness. That is why Democrats have been committed to expanding health insurance to millions of more Americans and ensuring it contains protections for patients with pre-existing pre conditions. But even with these successes, there are serious gaps in America's health care system, gaps which are unimaginable until you learn specifically what I mean. I want to focus on one of them, access to dental care. I spent the August recess last year visiting small towns in southern Illinois. I met with the new mayor of Carbondale, Illinois, Carolyn Harvey. She told me that, I asked her, I said, okay, you have the United States Senator in your office, Mayor. What's your ask? What do you want? Her answer, pediatric dentistry. Of all things, I couldn't imagine that. I thought it would be a sewer line or a street or something from a, for the law enforcement. Pediatric dentistry. She said, Senator, we just don't have enough dentists for kids in southern Illinois. In fact, there are 10 rural counties in the state that have only one dentist to serve the community. In Lawrence County, there's one dentist for 15,000 people. The ra that ratio, local ratio, is 11 times worse than the national average. What's the result of a shortage of dentists, particularly for kids? Patients' conditions worsen as they face delays to even get an examination. My office was really recently contacted about a child in southern Illinois who was found to have tooth decay in her 18-month checkup. The patient is covered by Medicaid, and her parents had a hard time finding a dentist who would even see her. Imagine this for a minute as I tell you this story, that you are the father or mother of a child that's 18 months old and has tooth decay and pain. After nearly a year, the patient was finally treated for severe tooth decay, erosion of the upper incisor teeth, and large tooth abscess. But her condition did not improve after multiple rounds of antibiotics, so her dentist called around to find a specialist to see her. They were told by the specialist, and I quote, Unfortunately, we have over 200 patients on our waiting list, so we really can't help her. This child is going to have to develop a much worse condition known as facial cellulitis. Then she can be sent to an emergency room, and then we can see her. Listen to what I just said. You have a child that's a year and a half, already been treated by a dentist, complications, go trying to find their way back to the dentist and being told, sorry, there's a waiting list here of 200 people, get to the end of the line and wait. Perhaps, though, there's a way out. If this child's condition worsens, is complicated, then maybe we can qualify under a new code, under the Medicaid, to finally see her and treat her. In other words, this toddler had to develop deep tissue infection, putting her at risk of sepsis, jaw damage, and other life-threatening illnesses to get her decayed tooth pulled. Imagine that as a parent, would you? Think about that for a minute. Her dentist called a specialist in a neighboring state. Thankfully, they were able to perform emergency surgery to remove the decayed teeth, but not before risking life-threatening illnesses. That is the reality for people in the United States of America, state of Illinois, today. That is unacceptable. In fact, it's embarrassing. So what are we going to do about it in Washington with all our money and all our power? Thankfully, there's a federal program that can help. It's called the National Health Service Corps. It provides a scholarship and loan payment, repayment 
to dental, medical, and mental health providers who work in rural and urban areas of need. It is the primary federal program intended to build the pipeline of health care providers and address shortages such as the one I just described to you. Nationwide, there are 20,000 professionals serving under the National Health Service Corps, treating 21 million patients. But $310 million in mandatory funding for this program will expire at the end of this month. We cannot allow this to happen. Senator Marco Rubio, Republican, Florida, and I have a bipartisan measure to extend this program and nearly triple its funding. It's supported by more than 65 leading medical organizations. They know the reality on the ground for poor people in America, particularly in rural areas and in urban areas of need. The Senate Health Committee passed a major bipartisan package last fall that included significant new funding for this program. I urge my Republican colleagues to join to support it. But there's a lot more we need to do. For example, in Illinois, only one quarter of practicing dentists accept Medicaid. Think of that one quarter of practicing dentists accept Medicaid. Because so few dentists take Medicaid patients, it means that kids in Illinois with private insurance are six times more likely to get a dental appointment than those who have Medicaid. In other words, if you're poor, that child complaining of a toothache is just gonna have to take it. That, unfortunately, in my state and in many states is reality. Low reimbursement rates and arbitrary practices by companies that administer dental benefits under Medicaid contribute to this. So I recently sent a letter to the three major insurance providers, DentaQuest, Avesis, and Involve, to understand their tactics and their corporate strategy and ensure they're not putting unnecessary barriers up for basic dental treatment. I'm also working with stakeholders to bring in federal dollars to expand dental residency training programs, fund mobile clinics that drive into rural areas and expand surgical capacity. I might just say as an aside, Mr. President, I've often asked the question, why in the world do we treat dentistry as anything other than a medical specialty? It certainly is. You've got a sore tooth or a decayed tooth or a problem in your mouth, you want help and you want it now. And you want a professional to provide it. And they go through years and years of training. And yet, instead of being treated like a medical specialty, like orthopedic or cardio, they're in a different category altogether. It makes no sense. Today I'm announcing a new bill that I'm introducing with Senator Roger Marshall of Kansas. Our bipartisan legislation will authorize funding for the Centers for Disease Control to enhance public health activities, improving dental care across America. It will support education, data collection, sealant treatments in school, water fluoridation efforts, development of the dental workforce, and community outreach such as the distribution basics, such as the distribution of toothbrushes to new parents and children. Illinois has not received funding for this important work in nearly 20 years for lack of funding. I want to change that. If we improve the health of Americans, especially kids, then we must invest in preventing cavities, tooth decay, and infections. We must also ensure that patients have access to treatment regardless of their zip code. I appreciate the partnership of my colleague, Senator Marshall, and I'll be working to pass this bipartisan legislation quickly. And I want to say just in closing, to this mayor, Carolyn Harvey in Carbondale, Illinois, you shocked me when you suggested pediatric dentistry was your ask, but it told me a lot about you and your heart and your caring for kids. And now that we know the reality of kids waiting for months and months and even years for basic dental treatment, let's do something about it not just in Illinois, but across this country. This is fundamental and basic to good health, and we ought to make sure it's included in all plans that want to expand health coverage. Mr. President, I yield the floor.